we are here to share winning strategy and secret hacks from top performers in the online course industry. My name is Monica Badiou. I am the in-house chief copywriter at Data Driven Marketing, and today's guest is Alifia Koraki. She's a fellow conversion copywriter who specializes in building and optimizing quiz funnels for course creators and coaches. And today, we are going to talk about top performing tactics to make your quizzes engage and convert. But before we dig into today's interview, I just wanted to remind you of how much your support means to us. We're here to make your podcast experience even better. And you can help us with just a quick favor by taking a moment to rate and review our podcast. You're giving us priceless feedback that helps shape future episodes. So tell me, has this show helped you make money? Has it helped you grow your business or improve your courses? If it has, please share it in the reviews. Go to ratethispodcast.com slash online courses. And nothing would make me happier today than to hear how this show has helped you. So far, we've done over 100 episodes of the show, and I'm dying to know which one was your favorite. Which guest was the one you enjoyed the most? What would you love to hear from? And who would you like us to interview next? So make my day and let me know in a review. Again, it's go to ratethispodcast.com slash online courses and let me know what you think. Let's make this podcast the best it can be. All right. With that simple request out of the way, let's get to the show. Olivia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And that was a fun intro. And you guys are doing amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing that with me. That makes me very happy to hear. So today we're talking about a really big topic. So most of the course creators we've met have had some sort of a quiz in their marketing. Some are using it for lead generation purposes. Other people are, you, are using it uh, deeper in their funnel to actually convert subscribers into buyers. So today I have a long ass list of questions that I've collected from our clients and from um, our team members. So I'd like us to get started with a low hanging fruit. What are some of the benefits of using quiz quizzes as lead magnets? And this is a question for, you know, to help people who are thinking about it. Is it worth to actually create a quiz to convert my visitors into subscribers? How does that work? So lovely, amazing question. And the simplest answer to that is if you have to Google and you search quiz conversion rates versus typical web lead magnet conversion rates, you'll get the answer. So typical lead magnet conversions vary from five to 10%. Whereas, wait for this, <laughs> this is a shocker. Whereas quizzes convert at 50 to 60% on average. Just that it's like, a a 10x increase just like just by changing the form of lead magnet and these are like average quizzes but who likes average right we're at least at this the, the listeners of this show they're beyond average so average lead magnets do have a higher conversion rate than 10 percent and similarly average like more than average quizzes they have a higher conversion rate like typically the quizzes i've written have almost like they're hanging between 80% to 90% conversion rate. That means that doesn't mean sales, but that, that also doesn't mean leads, but that means that that many subscribers, like if you put a lead magnet out there, 10 out of hundred people will download it. If you put a quiz out of, out there, 80 out of hundred people are at least coming in contact with your brand. So it is an amazing, amazing, amazing brand awareness too. What do you think makes a quiz so appealing? So it's, I, I've written about this on LinkedIn. What does, what does it make fortune tellers so appealing? It's the same psychology. So when we go to fortune tellers and we want to know about ourselves, about our lives from someone else, and we are our favorite subject. And that's the answer to why quizzes are so, so, so more compelling than any other lead magnet because other for other lead magnets the the like the the expertise is telling us okay do this do that 
but with quizzes we are finding out about about ourselves so it's like we're in and we're we're most invested in ourselves that's why quizzes work way 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 better than any other form of lead lead magnets so i know quizzes have been um popular marketing tactic for a while now uh, i'm thinking about yep. the ask method uh, it was a book that went viral a few years ago but how about now do you think it's more likely for you know website visitors to prefer the quiz experience do you think it's an emerging trend would it is it going to replace you know regular lead magnets in the future so instead of like i know a checklist you'd actually experience the quiz mm -hmm. um actually when many people are considering quizzes but it's still like if the course creator market is like if we talk about a pie, not even 2% of that pie has quizzes right now. So the quiz market is not at all saturated. And many people who have quizzes, they have such shitty quizzes that even then, like there is, the saturation point is very low. Like imagine like if we say like 90 out of 100 people are doing webinars, only five to 10 of them are doing quizzes as a touch point. So that's why, like, if you if you come and see like how many course uh, how many course creators are out there, many like hardly anyone is using very little. So so the saturation is very very low with quizzes. So what do you think it's stopping course creators from using more quizzes or from using this tactic more often in their marketing strategy? So let's think about creating a webinar. Okay, what does it take? A, an idea, a script and a recording software, that's it. What does it take to create a quiz? <laughs> An idea, a whole like whole big picture thing. What will the title be? What will the questions be? And then there's like, if a webinar takes one day to create it, a quiz takes more than two weeks to create it. It's, it's difficult, right? Like thinking about the questions and then the tech, the tech is overwhelming. Okay, but how, like, how does it create, like how do I integrate questions to the result pages? and then writing four different re result pages. People dread writing one email sequence. How like how do you write four different email sequences for four different audiences? That's the thing that stops them because hard work <laughs> are literally, the, that's the thing. But you know, I've seen lots of quizzes that have been generated with ChatGPT lately and they're implemented through Typeform. I think Typeform has different, mm -hmm. um, you know, sections. So if you answer B to question two, you're taking to another section that continues the journey. So yeah. what's your take on that? Because in theory, because of ChatGPT and tools like Typeform, it should be a lot easier to generate the quiz and just put it, you know, on your funnel. So Monica, as you're a copywriter, you know how ChatGPT works, right? Like if I want to write a welcome sequence, if I want, like I can pummel out a welcome sequence in 10 minutes. Does that mean it's worthy of conversations, connections, and conversions? Not, not, not like, not at all. So a good well-crafted welcome sequence takes seven days. A ChatGPT created welcome sequence takes 10 minutes. That's the same thing more and more quizzes are coming out but when i see them the questions are very buzzfeed type oh yeah what's your favorite vocation uh, spot like why why does it matter why does it matter why are you asking me this question now and you're your sleep coach like be relevant and have like what i try with my quizzes is adding a sort of challenge a sort of where like it's like almost an assessment and adding gamification strategies so the audience is extreme like the, i try to make the quizzes really hard not very like swipe 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 quizzes and that that's something that keeps their attention keeps them going to the next question and learning about something so even the whole quiz is also learning about the coach learning about the industry learning about themselves so it's very easy to create BuzzFeed type questions and have like GIFs and those sort of quizzes. But even those quizzes are very successful at converting leads, at converting subscribers. 
but then those subscribers fall out then they unsubscribe immediately within the next seven days or they take the quiz but they never give in their email to know the results so it ha the whole experience has to be something that the audience is extremely invested in like take take for example like what's your biggest faq turn that into a quiz not just like any like okay what's your beyonce style <laughs> or what's your what's your celebrity superpower these are the quizzes that are coming out even today in the coaching space but doesn't this you know conflict with the whole idea of you have to make things easy for a website visitor to convert into a subscriber it is like if they will see value they will be invested no matter if the whole experience like for example i'll give you an example of the recent quiz i did so it was for an e-commerce email course creator and she had this the, the whole the whole course is based on strategy so what we did with the quiz is we created eight different scenarios for eight different brands and then we had like okay uh, a website a uh, mattress brand has this is this problem which of this do you think is the right strategy to go for the email like for your client and then what we did was like we had four scenarios so they had to read through each of those scenarios to judge like okay what what it is and it was a score-based quiz so at the end what we did was like take the quiz and then we had an ebook of like almost 55 pages plus like who downloads ebook in 2024 and more people were more excited and that in that ebook there was this whole section of like what are the right answers and why they are the right answers what are the wrong answers and why they are the wrong answers and everyone like wait went crazy after it the client was not active on social media no not that active on social media and had a very very tiny list and no ad budget yet the whole built-in virality feature because everyone was sharing their landing page snippets in the comment section oh i scored 76 percent i i need to go find out in the ebook like which answer is wrong or which answer is right and then everyone was like oh i got i got a 91 percent. i got a 67 percent and her target like her target audience was extremely involved in oh what did you get oh what did you get and then the whole conversation and the chatter began around it and that's what we want quizzes to do like it has to be it has to have a built-in virality feature to that I think that's a very smart tactic. I haven't seen many quizzes using that, which yeah. kind of opens this controversial, controversial topic. So when do you ask for the email address before they start the quiz or after they start the quiz? Okay, now this is very controversial. Even I'm thinking about it. it. We use different tactics for different clients. We even test, like A-B test, like which is performing better. But I believe like if you're giving something that they're extremely invested in, like I gave the recent example of this quiz, and then they wanted to find out the wrong answers. Like they were on the edge of their seats. Like, okay, tell me where did I go wrong? And in that case, in this case scenario, we asked the, to give their email address by the end of the quiz. So it was just like they're on the edge and then we add a friction because they're so, they're, they just want the ebook so much. And we had comments coming in like best quiz ever. Oh shucks, I, had a, I have a project to deliver, but I've got carried away by your quiz. I have to go shower, but I, I can't wait to know wh which answers are mine. And you know, these were the things that were coming in in the comment section. But like if, suppose you have like a mattress brand and you it's an e-commerce company, or okay, now we are talking about consultants. So it's a sleep coach. And she's like, okay. And at that time, she knows that at the, at the by the end of the quiz, maybe people will not be that much invested because there's nothing to follow up after the quiz instead of just having like a one-on-one -on -one consult or a sell by chat thing. So in this case scenario, the best strategy is to ask for the email in the second question. Like, like ask the first question, which is very relevant then take their email address and then by and then have a sneaky thing where they have to enter their name and email address so then there's there are many quiz platforms that help with personalization so by the by third question you're calling them from your name okay monica so now that you told me about this 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 so here's my next question 
you get that. Interesting. So it's tailor made to the audience and industry. Industry, exactly. Very, very cool. Because I think we're we're thinking. We're, yeah, we're thinking of the whole quiz as a lead magnet. It's a very, you know, standard, straightforward tactic. It's like you write some questions. Maybe you create different journeys, but maybe. And then you focus on the results page. And all you have to do is figure out where should I ask for the email. And that's kind of it. But if you think about it, it's like the entry point into your funnel. And what happens there really can influence the journey down the line. Journey. Yeah. So, so here's my next question. So they give you their email and then at the end of the quiz, sometimes you send them to a results page or do you send the results via email? And instead of showing them a results page, you show them a tripwire, like a low cost offer. What's your experience with that? So even this, again, depends on the client, depends on the industry. But there's one thing that I always do with my quiz funnels. I don't send the email. I don't send them to the email for the results page. So immediately as they enter the email address or immediately as they finish the quiz, they get the results page because we don't want to frustrate because we are also thinking about the customer experience, right? We don't want to frustrate someone because see email is different. Like if I'm on the website and now I have to go and open the email and then go click the link and then we are just adding friction, unnecessary friction. So what I always do is have something valuable to go at for like for them to go and open in the email. So for currently I'm doing, um, energy like a a quiz for an energy healing coach so for them we are we are having like an exclusive facebook group invite and that invite is sent to the email but then they get the results page immediately after the quiz but if they want to enter the facebook group which everyone wants to do and for the other um, quiz that i asked like they want to download the ebook which they obviously want to do so the ebook is sent via email of course but the result page everything is there like who you are what 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 are your results what what this is about you and what are your next steps so they they can see the whole experience is complete when they get the results page we don't add friction there and sorry your next question was about tripwire and low ticket um funnels so th- there are two strategies like d- depending on how much the traffic is like what what amounts of traffic is coming in um there are many many it depends scenarios on whether to whether to lead with a freebie or whether to lead with a low ticket product so both works when your customer is in that journey of of being slightly more aware of the industry of you of whatever you're selling then selling a low ticket product because it becomes self liquidating right when you run ads to it the ad cost is covered with the low ticket product but if not, I use, I think of quizzes as just like, you know, just a hi, hello, chitter chatter at a networking event. And then having a proper good lead magnet that enhances the trust. Because let's face it, like the core space is changing. The funnels are getting longer. Sales cycles are getting many, like way, way longer. The trust is needed much, much more. More touch points are needed. A report said that now they need like 37 sales touch points. Someone else said 90 touch points, whereas it used to be seven back like two, three years back. So it has drastically increased. So in this can say scenario, we really need to build that trust. Uh, th- that trust. How do you build that trust? So I'll like typical Hormozy, which he says like, what's the first win that you can give your customer? So are they looking for a client? Are they, if you're in the health space, are they looking to lose one one pound? Like just if they're in the face yoga space, can you help them just get a brighter or like just plumpier skin in that moment? Like what's a very small win that you can deliver within 24 hours to three days, within three days? 
and it has to be so good that you know this is just a typical and it has to be very consumable like don't give them 60 page ebooks unless it's like a question answer where, where people are very invested in but just give them something so it can be a webinar this is the perfect place to add your webinar because now they like you you've made them laugh and it's like it's a saying like you make them laugh once and you've had them for life so make the quiz add one or two questions in the quiz which definitely makes them laugh when you've made them laugh you have earned the right to lead them to a webinar or have a five-day email course there have a mini free course there have a low ticket product there have um like anything that is more time consuming but still has a very big promise after the quiz nice what we usually do is we recommend an offer on that three-part page that makes perfect natural logical sense to the pain point or outcome they've been made aware of during their previous step with quiz funnels we've been testing um, specific offers based on the results, especially with language course creators, right? So mm-hmm. if you're a beginner and that's what your uh, results say, then this course would help you get to the next level in your yeah. fluency yeah. journey. If you're intermediate, then you have a different offer. And yes, to your point, it's not the easiest of things to do. <laughs> and I love that we're talking about a more sophisticated version of building a quiz. It's not like, let's just throw something there that answers some of their questions. Uh, So here's a question for you. How long should a quiz be? Because I've seen a quiz with 60 questions and I... I am a copywriter, so I was kind of led by the curiosity to see what happens on the other side. So how many questions or how long should a quiz be before, you know, the participant loses interest? Okay. So this. Okay. So it also depends, like 60 questions is a lot. And it, it just <laughs> every question is, it depends on the industry. So now the question is, is if you are doctors, lawyers, career professionals, or somebody way more sophisticated than sleep coach, a health coach, some like, you know, your industry is smaller, you're in the automotive industry, or you're teaching something way, way, way more complex. So then the quiz changes to assessment. And when there's assessment, then these 60 questions, 50 questions, 40 questions make sense. But I would still think that if your audience is in between like cold and warm, if they're like warm and they're warmed up and primed, then okay, fine. You can send them 100 questions if you want. But that becomes like, have you taken those personality tests? I I, I went on a retreat and they made us take those EEFT, NFT all those personality tests. And th- these questions are like way, way, way longer. So then the quiz changes into title of assessments. And when there is an as- assessment, it can be as long as it needs to be. But then like, suppose like it it, it is created from, I've seen this, like, um, do you think like there are four types of PCOS and then a doctor, a gynecologist created a quiz like, okay, how, which likely you are and based on that which tests do you need to do so it was created by a hospital and these are the tests that you need to do and then that becomes kind of a paid assessment so it's either 21 dollars or, or something dollars and what it, it's doing is it wants like the hospital wants more people to come and take tests in that specific hospital so then these questions are more like change the title into assessments make them paid and then the the quality of your subscribers will uh, sorry sorry the quality of your subscribers will also increase but even your ad costs will decrease i like that tactic because i'm thinking right now we actually have one client for whom we can implement this 
she's teaching business English. And one of the bonuses she's offering is like a custom learning plan, custom study plan to get you from here to there. But if she implements an assessment, she can actually deliver that product, you know, in an automation mm-hmm. and ha- use it as a tripwire basically without putting anything in between of the quiz and the offer that becomes the offer. I think yeah. that's very smart. Quiz I have can one... be Go ahead. in many different ways. And I, ha- I had one thing to say before we move on that when I, I have used quizzes for this purpose as well, when a client, like, you know, we, uh, many of my clients and in the coaching space, I have more than one offer. I have more than one audience. What do I do? And quizzes can be used excellently to do that segmentation as well as lead every every traffic or every person coming into your ecosystem to where they belong. So one example is like if you have if you have like an online marketing ecosystem and you're teaching Pinterest, Facebook and Instagram. Not everyone needs Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram. And this is a basic rule. Like when you give them a lot of options, basic restaurant rule, your sales become lower and lower. So when they're leading to the website and seeing all these different programs, it feels overwhelming. So the best best strategy is that you, you ask them in the quiz and then tailor your quiz accordingly as well. Like you ask them, what do you need help with most? Pinterest marketing, Instagram marketing, Facebook marketing. And if they, if they click on that, and then you have like a complete different funnel, it's way more work, but these are for more advanced coaches who are in the multi six figure, seven figure realm that they, they, then you lead them to a Pinterest masterclass, a Pinterest low ticket course, a Pinterest high ticket course. And then the welcome sequence is all Pinterest related. The sales page is all Pinterest related. So you literally use, you can segment your audience with a quiz. That sounds like a dream for me as a copywriter, probably a nightmare for a course creator who has to do this on their own. So I have one question about the type of questions from the survey. So I just, uh, I tested a quiz. Uh, It was related to stress. It was basically trying to figure out how stressed I am in four different categories. But here's my issue with that. I think it was like 30 questions, yes or no, or, you know, a scale from one to five. And all of them were negative questions. So they were all focused on the pain and the problem. And it was, it didn't make me feel that good taking the quiz. I was like, is this really, Does this really have to be this bad, this negative felt like the whole experience was experience was let's look at what's wrong with you right now. And um, what's your take on that? So that's my ick around quizzes. Most quizzes that I see on the internet are surveys. Surveys positioned as quizzes. Quizzes are different. Assessments are different. So you can't ask yes or no questions. You can't ask all negative questions. You have to like you have to keep customer experience in mind. What are you want make it like what do you want the client to feel? Like you want them to feel like leave feeling a little bit better than when they entered your ecosystem. So even if it's like divorce, like I I was looking at a quiz recently, are you ready for a divorce? That's like a whole negative thing. Because the client is not like, he's going through that stress. He's maybe considering a marriage counselor. He's crying, weeping, like, oh, should I leave my wife? Should I not leave leave my wife? And then when you add like whole yes, no, yes, no, yes, no questions, it's just a put off. Like this is not a survey. Usually everyone, like 50% of the quizzes I take are all surveys. Uh, Do you have job experience? Yes or no. Blah, 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 blah. Yes or no. It's not necessary. Like, People, people, you pay people for taking surveys. You give them incentives. And if you trick them into taking a quiz, which ha- which is meant to deliver so- a result based on like something about themselves, and you make it all about your offers, just trying to know your audience, it's, I feel like it's, um, it's not fair to your audience. So 
how you consider question, you construct your questions are how, what, where, when, why. So con construct your questions like if you are talking about the sleep, the stress coach, and yes or no questions. Um, do you feel stressed when you have to cook your meals? Okay, that could be a question, and the answer is yes, no. That's not something that we want to do as who are creating more than average quizzes, the above average quizzes. So in that in this in, the, in that case scenario, the question can be what what's stopping you to create what's stopping you from meal prep? And then the four options are um, I guess I, I'm so tired from my nine to five job that by the time I I reach home, all I can think of is microwave dinner. So, you know, you are mirroring their frustrations in the quiz. And then they're like, okay, this person gets me. When, when you have those what, why, when, how, where questions, the whole experience becomes like, okay, this person is understanding me. Okay, this is me. And how you do it is ask, like the questions also have to be based on heavy, heavy, heavy market research. What are your top FAQs? What are they saying? What's like we copywriters are very familiar with this VOC. So that's voice of, voice of customer data. But like as specific and as descriptive you can make them. And this is where AI fails to do it, right? It will just give you funny whipped up chat GPT jargons. But it will not give you something that your customers are speaking. And this was literally my next question is, where do you find, you know, that language to mirror back that pain point and obviously customer language and customer surveys. And um, we've, we've been talking about that. I've been talking about that a few different times on this podcast. And it's probably the most boring thing entrepreneurs, you know, have to do that i mean that's the perception but i think it's the number one step that unlocks everything in your marketing okay um we're getting close to the end of this podcast episode and if you found it valuable please drop us a comment let us know how we're doing i have a final question what are some common mistakes course creators are making right now with their quizzes what's like the top three i think we covered them all but if you want to sum sum them up a they are treating their quizzes as surveys b they're treating their quizzes like buzzfeed quizzes adding gifs and totally unrelated questions and then third the whole experience is isn't like someone coming into your ecosystem and you want to impress them have good brand photos have good questions have descriptive specific questions and i know you you shared like about voc data but have interviews with them conduct surveys uh like one question which cre all credits to john ovb but like you know when they enter your ecosystem ask them like what's going on in your life and business that led you here and that question alone will give you so, so, so many good insights that you will have much better questions to conduct and much better questions to ask. And then after the quiz, the whole, the whole thing, like depending if you're making like the whole thing, what you do after the quiz will depend on if you will make 2K a month, 5K a month, 10K a month, 30K a month. So my tagline on LinkedIn is like build and optimize your funnels until you, you earn consistent 30K income because that's possible when you have a good value ladder. Have a low ticket, but it's, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean to have a low ticket offer than a high ticket offer and then a membership or group program. It just needs to be like, even if you want to sell like 15K membership, sell it with a quiz, but add the make the whole experience very customer friendly. Like make them go from, a journey to another journey. Um, if they're getting stressed, first step is finding out why they're stressed. The next step is just make what what is what does a stressed person need first? Either removing toxic people from their relationships or having a good night's sleep. Work like make that first part of your funnel, making them have a good night's sleep or making them remove the top five toxic people from their life. 
and first like make them feel good and then that they will automatically turn into a customer we've had customers we've had seven day funnels we've had 14 day funnels we've had 21 day funnels we've had even 90 day funnels where we are asking for sale and 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 then there are some people say that oh no 90 days are too long customers drop by then it's not necessarily sometimes that's what you need to find them up for that sale i love this episode so so many value bombs first of all i i had the same false belief like i didn't realize there's a difference between a survey and the quiz fabulous thank you for sharing your insights with us uh and if people heard this and want some more of your wisdom where should they go they should i don't know when will this episode air so if my website is ready of course they can come and meet me my quiz and everything we are building that so if not they can find me on linkedin i typically almost live and breathe there <laughs> i'm always available on linkedin so you can find me on linkedin and you can type a l e f i y a k h o r i k a and you can i i think i'm the only alifia koraki on linkedin so you'll find me easily <laughs> Alifia, thank you for joining us today and for the person who is watching this or listening to this. If you found this interview useful, please subscribe wherever you are so you can get future episodes.